Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it's time for us to do another vintage vehicle unboxing and assembly. It's been a while since we've done one of these, and I just felt like doing it. Uh, so, since it's my show, I can do what I feel like doing. Uh, and we are going to open and assemble this uh, Cobra Ice Snake from 1993. I got this at a very good price. Uh, at assembly required in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I got it with the intention of assembling it on a video like this, so it's about time we did that. Uh, I would not, um, actually, this, this is not a sealed item. Uh, the box is already torn open. It was like that when I got it. Uh, the contents inside are not sealed, um, so we're not really hurting anything by taking this thing out and putting it together. Um, I would not open a sealed item if it were from the 80s. Uh, those are nowadays just kind of rare and it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do to open up a sealed 80s G.I. Joe item. And I wouldn't open up any sealed item from any era if it were something rare. But ice snakes, there are plenty of these around, so uh, I think we're all right here. Um, now, when I was looking at this box, I noticed um, it includes the sticker sheet and the catalog, but it does not include the instruction sheet. So I will have to look up the instructions online in order to assemble this. But that's all right, nothing's going to stop us. I have my tools, um, I have my glasses, I have my soda, I've uh, got a Pepsi in here. Uh, I'm out of peanuts, so no peanuts in the Pepsi, but that's all right. I think we're ready to go, so let's get started. Let's start by taking the contents out of the box and seeing what all's here. I did peek in here uh, a bit uh, to see uh, if it looked like it was all here, and I think it is. Um, set the box aside for now. Uh, like uh, most 90s vehicles, this came with a cardboard tray inside the box, and I believe these parts would normally have been sealed in a plastic bag uh, but as you can see there's no plastic bag but the parts are still on the frame so there's that to start with um, we have the catalog which I did see in there um, oh, and there is the sticker sheet okay uh, and uh, catalog this you know I'll add this to my catalog collection I don't think I had this one uh, at least I don't recall having this one, so it'll be fun to uh, take a look through that catalog later. Uh, and then we have, um, looks like a hood, and a wheel, and a main body, and another wheel, and what I assume is an axle, and then a spring-loaded weapon with a black string. Uh, so I hope that's enough. Um, I'm going to pull up the instructions on the internet and um, take a look at this and see what step one is. Okay, slight snag. Um, step one involves a rubber band, and there is no rubber band here. So fortunately, I happen to have a rubber band that I was using for something else. So I have no idea if this is the right size. But this is what we've got, so this is what we will use. So I need to take some pieces off. Uh, I need to take this um, this connector bar off here, and we'll get started with that. Okay, this uh, dark blue connector bar uh, needs this rubber band wrapped around it, and it's supposed to be wrapped around in a particular way. Um, and I've looked at the instructions, and I think I get it. Um, we are going to try it anyway. Um, at least I hope I get it. Uh, I'm going to do this the way the instructions show. I'm not sure I can explain it. Okay, this first loop is supposed to go on the hook, but through the second loop. And that should tighten really well. Okay. All right, I think I got it, but that's got to be on the hook. Okay, all right, well, um, so if I can attempt to describe how to put this rubber band on, you have to hook it on this little, there's a um, kind of a little peg right there. You have to hook the rubber band on that, pull it tight, pull uh, wrap the rubber band around the bar, 
and then put the rubber band through that first loop and then put that loop back on the hook. So uh, that's pretty tight. Um, I hope this rubber band is large enough uh, to do what I need to do without breaking, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, the next step, if I can read it here really quick, uh, is we have to put this on on the main body. So here's the main body. There's the front. Looks like the hook side goes down and the rubber band goes that way. And that's supposed to rest in there. And the rubber band is supposed to go through this loop in the center. Let me grab my grab that rubber band and pull it through. There we go. Oop. There we go. Okay, so then it pulls through there and it hooks on this post underneath like that. Okay, now, so you have a rubber band that runs from this post through this hole out this center post in what looks like the cockpit and wraps around this um, dark blue bar, okay? Uh, I have no idea what the purpose of that is, but um, it's on there. So let's let's move to the next step and see if we can make sense of this. Okay, it looks like we're supposed to take this, the roll cage, and essentially put the two ends into this central bar. Move that out of the way, like so, and then. Uh, it's supposed to connect, which it certainly isn't connecting very easily. Is there a key to it? It doesn't look like it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, just had to work with it for a second. So now, now the the roll cage is connected to that, uh, that crossbar piece uh, with the rubber band on it. Um, still not sure what purpose that serves but it's done okay what next um we're at step five roll cage uh lift roll cage and fit white canopy through the roll cage bars white canopy fit through the roll cage bars like how um lift roll cage and fit all right, this is going to take a little... Oh, I see, I think it fits like this. Okay, uh, well that's not gonna fit very easily. All right, hang on, give me a minute to look at the instructions again. Okay, all right, I, th I think I get it. You have to get, kind of get the front end of the the, the hood here, the uh, canopy or whatever they call it, uh, inside that roll cage. So yeah, there we go. So that the roll cage bars fit uh, in these notches here. So that's done. And then I believe this just uh, just snaps on. Uh, we've got a couple tabs on the sides. We've got a tab in the front. So in theory, we should be able to just line this up. I said line it up. Hold on, that's, there we go. Line it up and press it on until it snaps on. So there, there, there. Ah, success, success. There we go. All right, so we got the front end assembled, the roll cage is on. Uh, let's see what the next step is. Okay, I get it now. I get it now. Uh, step six is just activating the roll cage. Okay, so the roll cage, you close it uh, by putting these two, these two pegs into these two holes, right? And th that holds pretty well. But it actually has like spikes on it. Uh, there are spikes on the roll cage, and it shows a, a graphic here. Of, like you have some GI Joes in front of your. Uh, ice snake here and you want to take them out, you just lift up on that roll cage a bit and BAM! Uh, instant deadly weapon. Uh, that is hilarious and I uh, love it. Um, okay, uh, next is the axle installation. Upside down, uh, guide post on, uh, on white axle into white vehicle body as shown. Uh, this looks like a guide post. It looks like it goes that way. 
Press down on axle until white uh, vehicle tab uh, and post snap into axle slot and hole as shown. Um, okay, uh, I believe I see it. So that goes, okay, so this um, axle piece, it actually fits right over the post that the rubber band is wrapped around. So uh, if you align it correctly, it should go, yes, perfectly like that, and then it should snap in. Let me see where the tabs are so I can press it in the right spots so it will snap in but not break. Uh, there. Oh, yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. All right, so axle is assembled, and next step is ah the um, the ski assembly. So still got to take the skis off of the frame. So let's do that. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Uh huh. And there. Okay. All right. Oops. Didn't cut the front tips off there. And come on, come on. Uh, there, okay. All right, so we got the skis off and these, this should be pretty simple. Uh, let's turn it over. And um, match blue skis A and B with white vehicle slots A and B and press into place. So I guess they are not interchangeable. So which one? Ski A, Ski B, and it took me a minute to figure out what uh, I was supposed to slot it into, but um, it, I guess it goes like this, and press in until it connects, there we go, there we go. I, I thought it connected to this front sort of area here, but looking at the instructions a little better, it connects a little farther back. Oh, and that fits really well. Make sure that clicks into place. Yeah. All right. We have skis. Dig it. Dig it. We have skis. Now, we have skis, but we need wheels. So the next is the wheel assembly. We have two of those. And those, let's see. Snap the two back wheels into onto the white axle posts as shown. Uh, that is about as simple as you can get. You've got mushroom clips right there. The wheel goes on. Press on until it... Ah. Well, it's not. It doesn't go easy, does it? Okay, I want to be careful not to break that. So... And according to the instructions, there's no secret to it. It's just a press on until it stays on. So that is, that's worrying me right there. That looks like it wants to break. All right, that is seriously not going in. Um, there's no left or right wheel. Um, I may need to, I, I need to take this wheel off before we go any further because if I press any harder on that or if I try to twist it, it's gonna break that axle off. So hold on, time out. Okay, I got the wheel off without breaking the axle or the wheel but they're like some of the plastic on the wheel has shaved off onto the uh, post and some of the plastic on the post is left inside the wheel so this worries me i don't want to have another breakage situation like with the ninja lightning but um, these wheels are not fitting on well and I need to figure out a good way to put them on. Unfortunately, the... And so, oh, okay, all right, I got one. I think I got one. The inst oh, yes, it snapped on. The instructions... Uh, I tried the other wheel on this side, and it, it seemed to go on a bit better. The instructions are no help at all. It just says, press it on. Well, okay, I was pressing it on, but I was about to break the damn thing. So, uh, I, I don't see any indication that there's a left and right wheel. The wheels look identical, but... For some reason, this one was not going on that side very well. So we'll try it on this side. Try to press it straight and not not get it all sideways. This wheel is just going to give me trouble, isn't it? All right. Ooh. 
Uh, ah, there we go. Oh, it's on. It didn't break. Oh, oh goody. It didn't break. Um, that, okay, uh, I don't like that. Uh, that was much harder than it should have been. Um, and I, I felt like it was going to break. It did, uh, it did clip on. It didn't break, but yeah, that was much too tight to fit. I feel, I, I think there is a better way to do that. All right, pause just for a minute to take another look at the instruction sheet. And it uh, looks like we need to put the launcher on next. The launcher has a pivot to which it attaches. Uh, for anyone concerned that I am uh, using my hobby knife here on the table surface, this table surface uh, was purchased because it is tough and sturdy and it will be just fine. It's also usually covered up with um, poster board for my uh, reviews. I shoot the reviews on this surface. Uh, so don't worry about it. Guess what? You don't even need to put it in the comments. Everything will be fine. Um, so this goes in here. Um, and it uh, looks like it goes in dang, firmly. Like the wheels, they, it certainly is a tight fit. So I'm going to have to... I don't want to break it. But it does. it's going to have to work with me here. It's got to go in. It's like that, that mushroom clip that uh, on this tiny little pivot is too small for the post that it's supposed to go into. All right, but I'm going to have to work with this. I seem to have mislaid my pliers, which would have been a big help in this situation. I may have to go find them because... Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe. Oh, that is tight. Ah, there we go. Ah, that's on. Yay. Uh, and then next. Next, next, next. Oh, come on. Um, I'll just put this on it. Yeah, like that. Um, should just pop right on that little clip right there. There we go. I'm trying to let you see it a little bit better. There is this um, bar right here that goes on this clip right there at least in theory and let's see yeah it just goes straight on or at least it's supposed to but that's another really tight fit uh an unnecessarily tight fit uh why you do this to me hasbro why you do this you know this this is supposed to be assembled by kids in 1993 this, this should not be a struggle for an adult in 2020. Uh, all right. Once again, I've got to be very careful with a part here because this does not want to give, and I need that clip to grab onto this bar. And I'm going to have to negotiate it a bit. Okay. There. Okay. Again, another scary piece to assemble. It doesn't look like, yeah, it doesn't tilt up very much because there's a little stopper right there uh, behind it. Uh, so it doesn't tilt up very much, but it will now pivot. Uh, and we now have to, we have to tie some string here. We have to tie some string to uh, this grapple hook here. So let's go ahead and, oops, let's tie, uh, Let's cut that off. And um, I was looking at the instructions to try to figure out where to tie it on. And it took a minute to figure out. Um, it says I'm supposed to tie it to one of these holes in uh, or on the grapple missile. Uh, and then the other end is supposed to go on the launcher rings. And I doubt you can see it, but there are a couple really small rings right there where my finger is uh, on this launcher. And it looks like it's supposed to go into one of those. So we're going we're gonna to thread it through. All right. And then we're going to tie it. Uh, we'll, we'll knot it a couple of times. And that should do. The other end, let's see. If we put it in this way, this side of the missile, okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna loop it through this hole on the missile and 
and tie it. Tie a couple knots. If I can. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to not tie uh, big knots, right? I'm trying to keep the end of the string kind of short without a lot of excess on the end. But uh, my fingers are too fat to really do it right. So we're going to keep trying. This thing is almost done. Basically, we just got to put these other missiles on. And then we got to get to put the stickers on. That's always my favorite part. Man, this string is not cooperating. I need it to thread through that loop like so. There we go. And tighten. Now, if I load this thing in the launcher, press it until it clicks. Yes. Uh, and if I fire it, it, the string should hang on to it. Here we go. Uh, Okay, what's going on? That's the trigger. There it goes. There you go. That was kind of fun. Let's do it one more time. Really has to go all the way back and then trigger. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, well, um, I don't want to put too much pressure on the string, so I'll just kind of rest it in there for right now. Uh, get back to our instructions. Yeah, so basically, I'm just going to cut these extra missiles off. And these are extra missiles that can be used with the missile launcher. So, uh, yeah. It can fire these missiles, but of course, uh, one nice thing about uh, at least some of these 90s vehicles that have missile launchers is they gave you a way to store the extra missiles. So you get a couple extras and, uh, yeah, they just go in here. Uh, I guess. Uh, how are they supposed to go? They just, oh yeah, okay, here we go. There! Okay, so, wait, that should go in further, I think. Uh, uh, there, okay. Alright, so... No. There, I think. <laughs> uh, so we got missiles in front for storage. We got, I guess I'll just have to press that in there. All right, next we have uh, the stickers. You get to put on the stickers, always the best part. Um, and unfortunately I have to do this on my side so you, uh, you don't necessarily get to uh, see it until I turn it around, but this should be easy enough. It looks like number four goes right on the side. And I like these. These are like silvery kind of um, reflective stickers. That's kind of cool. Um, and we have a, we have a cobra emblem with like um, icicles and a snowflake in the background. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I want that to be like the cobra arctic uh, emblem, um, but it's it's different. It is different. Okay, so there's that. What number is that? Number five. Uh, where's number five? There's number five. A number five caution sticker goes in the in the front, of the main body. Looks like on the hood piece. And like other '90s vehicles, it ins it's instructing me. In fact, I'm going to move it for a little farther back. It's instructing me to place stickers over some of the molded details, and I don't love that. Um, so we got a couple on, and what's next? Number six goes there. Where's number six? There's number six. Number six, let's try to grab that, and that goes in this piece over the back wheel, like so. And I think that's all for that side, looks like it. Let's see, we got some that go on the top. That's a number eight, and number eight, let's see. 
That is a classic Cobra emblem with a uh, trademark stamp on it because Cobra likes to protect its intellectual properties. And this, um, let's see, it's supposed to be facing the back. So this goes on, and I don't want to cover this little molded in uh, fuel cap. So this should go right in front of it, like, like, so there we go. And same on the other side. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I'm going to have to switch hands with that because uh, I want to get that. Okay. All right. So this, this is my favorite part of the assembly. I, I really like applying the stickers. It's just, uh, it's, it's nostalgic and it's just kind of a, a quiet activity. It's calming get a bit of zen for the day uh, all right cobra emblems and we need to put the ice snake um, where does that go oh I see the ice snake thing goes there oh and then we have a a lift sticker number nine which goes I don't understand where it's pointing oh it goes there number nine sticker goes right there. so like so and I'm guessing that the little arrows on the lift sticker face to the front, which would make sense because I think it's supposed to be pointing at the canopy. So it would be, it would be here. Try to center that pretty good, best I can anyway. Not bad. All right, and then on this part right here, we have this like, I think that's supposed to be like ice snake, but with like, with icicles hanging on it. it it's kind of silly, but uh, that's okay. Uh, the whole thing is kind of silly, but we love it anyway. Okay, so this goes on just like that. Let me try to center this. Yeah, it's about the same width as this kind of molding on the hood. So that helps center it. There. Not too bad. Ice snake. Um, we have a stay clear. That's number seven. That's number seven. It goes right there. And with the arrows pointing up. So that goes here. All right. These little s caution stickers and stay clear, and uh, you know, on some vehicles, your no step stickers, um, I think it just adds a bit of verisimilitude to these vehicles. Although, you know, in the 90s, they got so wild and uh, divorced from the from reality I don't uh, necessarily know why they bothered to uh, to give them any kind of a realistic feel to them but you know it, it's all right it's a nice try uh, Cobra snow goes there uh, and uh, as much as possible I am trying to not put these stickers over the molded uh, details um, it would have been nice if some of these stickers had kind of worked around the details on the, uh, on, on the toy. TPH Rescue goes on this side. There we go. This side, and it's going to go where? It's going to go on this piece right there. So TPH Rescue goes here. All right, I'm amazed that anyone actually sits through all of these videos. Uh, so if you've made it this far, I appreciate it and thank you. Um, 
and let's see there seems to be yeah we got a num another number six sticker that goes on this side pretty well with where it was on the other side. So it will be as symmetrical as we can make it. Got one more caution sticker that goes there. And we got one more big Cobra snowflake and that is our last one. I kind of dig these stickers though. Um, it's, it's a bit unique having uh, these kind of uh, reflective foil stickers. Um, they're kind of cool. Let's see. I dropped a missile off, but I'm trying to line this up with how I had it on the other side. Yeah. Pretty much dead center. There. Okay, stickers are assembled, and there is our completed ice snake. And that was my unboxing of the Cobra Ice Snake from 1983. Uh, I did enjoy it, but although there were some stressful parts to it, uh, some parts didn't want to go on very easily. It seems like it's that way with every vehicle we assemble. Some of you may have noticed that this box is bilingual. This looks like a Canadian box. Um, Canada got the same vehicles we got in the U.S., uh, but when there was an American flag sticker or a sticker that said USA on it, it would be a Canadian flag uh, or it would say Canada instead of USA. Well, um, on the Cobra vehicles, you know, you didn't have an American flag. Um, so I believe this would have been identical to the US release, except the box uh, also has French on it as well as English. So uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I know this type of video isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody is going to enjoy sitting with me and putting a, a vehicle together. It's, it's not uh, exciting. It's not high energy. It's kind of low key. But I enjoy doing them, and I'll do them as much as I can. So as I get vehicles that um, are cheap enough and you know not rare uh, that we can assemble, I'll do more videos like this. But mainly, I'm working on reviews. I'm actually in the process of getting some reviews ready right now. Just thought I'd take a break from it. I hope you like what we have coming up. Um, but uh, uh, just remember, a uh, new video goes up on Sunday. Uh, and every once in a while in the middle of the week, I'll give you something like this. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you soon with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.